All right, why Jesus was baptized. Well, let's look at the scripture here. Matthew chapter 3. Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have the need to be baptized by you, and yet you are coming to me? This troubled John, right? He was like, what? But Jesus answering said to him, allow it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all un, excuse me, not unrighteousness, all righteousness. This was a right thing, Jesus is telling us. It was the right thing for this to happen. So this is the beginning of his public ministry. That's what we're seeing here. So, so Jesus is now in entering his public ministry. It's all opening up. What does he do? One of the first things he does, he goes down to the Jordan, gets in the water, and he has John, ask John to baptize him him. John knew who he was. Remember, John said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And now he sees him and and Jesus is ready to get baptized by him and asking him to baptize him. So John is just like, what is going on here? He didn't get it, right? But he will and he does get it and you're going to get it. Here it is. Let's look at it right now, guys. Here it is. So it's the beginning of his ministry. And what is it? His, it was his own choice. Nobody forced Jesus to get baptized. He chose to do this. Okay? John didn't tell him. Nobody else told him. So John recognized the irony here. He was like, what? So Jesus, remember, was the perfect Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus. And he identified here. This is why. Here Now you're starting to see the reason, my friend. He was identifying with sinful man. Remember, there's another scripture that says that he became sin who knew no sin. Remember that? Jesus became sin who knew no sin. And that's what we're seeing here. And it's really powerful, you guys. So (laughs) this is great. Let's get right back into the presentation. So Jesus was not guilty, okay, and did not deserve the cross, And so in that same way, my friend, in that same way, he did not need to be baptized. You and I, yes, we need to be baptized. I mean, it's not a necessity to get saved. You just need to give your heart to the Lord, surrender your life to Jesus to be saved. But baptism is a a sign of obedience. It's something that we do as Christians, and it's a good thing. So Jesus was not guilty, did not deserve the cross. And so in that same way, he did not need to be baptized. Now, yet he was identifying himself with fallen and sinful humans like you and like me, my friend. He was identifying with us. This is so good. He was done. He, this was done, excuse me, so that he could take all our sin to the cross. You're going to see that in a second here. What do you mean, take all our sin to the cross? When we are baptized, when you are baptized, when I am baptized, we are dying to that old self. You and I, we're leaving that old sinful self, that flesh behind in that water. It was a type of burial, as as Pastor Chuck Smith used to say. But when he was baptized, when Jesus was baptized, what happened? He picked up that burden. He soaked up that sin, that that old self that was left behind in that water when you were baptized, when I was baptized. He's picking it up so that he could take it all the way to the cross. He's picking up what we left behind, and he then carries it where? To the cross, my friend, to all the way to the cross. That's where our sins are nailed to, you guys. They were delivered there at the cross. Wow. Great mystery in this stuff, but it's there and it's powerful. I love it, don't you? <laughs> this is so good. He carried it all the way up. Calvary, 
and up to that cross. So after he was baptized, remember this, after he was baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened. And what happened? And John, it says that John, he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and settling on him. On who? Jesus. And then John said, and behold, that there was a voice from the heavens that said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Wow. This is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. Jesus stood in the place of sinful man. Jesus stood in the place of sinful man. Why did he do that? Well, he did that because he had to stand in your place, in my place, to forgive the sins. Because when Jesus stood in our place and took our sin, he was standing in front of the Father. And that sin, when the Father looked away, I believe, and it was there was darkness, that sin was darkness died. It all was taken care of, paid for as Jesus suffered things that you can't even imagine, but it all died on that cross with him. It was buried and gone. And guess what? That only that is only forgiven. That is only applied to you when you believe and put your trust and your faith in Jesus Christ. Only through him. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one goes to the Father except by me. Jesus' words, not mine, Jesus. So if you haven't given your life to Jesus, why not? Can you think of any good reason not to? Even if I'm wrong, you have nothing to lose. But if I'm right, you have everything to lose, your own soul. That's the most important thing you have is your soul, where you're going to be forever. Everybody's going to live forever. You, you're going to live in torment and pain and suffering and darkness, which is just distance from God. That's all that is. Being far away from God is, is a place of darkness and suffering. But to be close to him is a place of light, a place of paradise, a place of peace, true peace, coming down from the Father, filling your heart and being with you. That, that This is what heaven is, my friend. If you would like that, you can say this prayer right after me. Just repeat these words. You are praying from your heart to God. You may be feeling guilty for your sin. That's okay. That's a good thing. You're a sinner. Yes, you are. I am too. Every human being is a sinner. Some people say, well, I'm a pretty good. They think God grades on a curve or something. No, I'm pretty good compared to most. Well, that may be true, but you're still not where you need to be. The Bible says that only Jesus, only Jesus was found sinless. He's the only one who's good. The rest of us are bad. (laughs) hate to break the truth to you. But if you feel that and you like that dealt with, that sin to be forgiven by God, you could say this prayer after me. You ready? Let's pray. Repeat these words after me, okay? Dear God, I know that I am a sinner and I'm sorry for my sin. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you shed your blood for me. I also believe in three days you were raised from the dead and you're alive today. I choose to follow you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Remember me in your kingdom. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. (laughs) Amen, my friend. Hey, God loves you, and God has a plan for your life. Make sure you're going to a Bible-believing church. Make sure that you're praying and getting fellowship with other believers. Very important. And reading your Bible, very, very important. All right, love you guys. God bless you. Hey, hit this playlist right here if you want to see more. We're doing a study on how to find Jesus in the Old Testament right now. We're in Joseph right now, and these episodes, I think, will bless you your heart. So don't forget, click on this playlist right here.